What's going on YouTube? It is now time for the week five team analysis. We're gonna take a look at the matchup that the Eternity City Enders is going to have against the uh, Seattle Sandtrews. Um, of course, the Seattle Sandtrews are coached by the Sandtrew Bogut. And at the time of this recording, he is undefeated. Uh, so, let, just in general, an undefeated record um, going into week four, he had some pretty tough matchups. Um, one of the teams that I'm particularly worried about, the Seattle Sea Luchas, he beat 3-0. And, and then he also managed to beat the Edinburgh Knights 2-0. So those close records and seeing that uh, with his team, he's picked up most of his kills with Skarmori, Mianxiao, and Mega Charizard Y, really gives me an idea of what to expect in the battle against him. Now, the general assumption is, okay, he has Mega Charizard, why you have Venusaur, you're at a disadvantage. But that is where uh, I really get to play around with some EVs and some different spreads and really a few unconventional moves. Um, now, what do I expect him to bring to the battle? I expect him to bring Latias, Skarmori, Florges, maybe Gyarados, Mian Xiao, and Mega Charizard, why? I don't know if he's going to bring Gyarados or if he's going to bring... Uh, Snorlax. Now, I don't think he's going to bring Jolteon, Shaman, and Gastrodon just because they can't really do anything to my team. Um, those Pokemon don't get any notable coverage against any of my teammates. Uh, also, they're very easily KO'd by a lot of my Pokemon. Uh, for example, Mega Venusaur is just able to hit all three of those Pokemon really hard while they can't really do much back. I think the best thing that Gastrodon can do is be max special defense and then mirror coat something back in my direction. Now with all that being said, since I'm expecting him to bring those Pokemon, if he brings me and Shao, I am fairly certain that it will be Scarfed. And not so much if he brings me and Shao, I'm expecting him to bring me and Shao. Fortunately though, me and Shao can't do much to Mega Venusaur, especially if it's bulky. Uh, he could run acrobatics on it and not run an item, but even then we're looking at a 2 KO and I get to hit him really hard. So, I'm, I'm not very worried about that. I'm going to put enough special defense on my Mega Venusaur to live a sun boosted Fire Blast from Mega Charizard Y. This enables me to do two things. Number one, I could just run Synthesis and kind of stall out his sun, uh, or even wait for him to miss a Fire Blast. If he has Overheat, then that's it. I can't live in Overheat no matter how much special defense I put on my Venusaur. I think the best I can do is have an 18% chance of living something like overheat in the sun. Uh, if he has fire blast or flamethrower or, or to a lesser extent heat wave, I can live all those options. Now, I have seen him running more unconventional things. When he went up against the Seattle Seahawks Luches, he actually put Earthquake on his Mega Charizard Y just to deal with the heat trans switch in. And so that's why um, stranger things like Dragon Dance, Charizard Y, or uh, a Bounce Gyarados, things that you just don't see but those are options, I'm, I'm keeping those in mind when I'm building against this team. Uh, I do expect something like Latias to perform more of a standard role. He's only used it uh, once that I could see, so I'm not really worried about Latias. It's something I can easily trap with Weavile and kill it, or I can outspeed it with Sinchino and 2 ko it. I'm not too worried about Latias, as long as I keep Venusaur away from it. should be okay. Skarmory is another thing that uh, I'm just not too worried about. Granted, it can hit Mega Venusaur with flying type attacks and set up entry hazards. A lot of my teammates are grounded, which is why Mesprit was a nice pickup there because I can have another airborne teammate. So if he tries to set up spikes, I'm really going to be looking into using Mesprit as a utility counter to Skarmory and uh, to a lesser extent Gastrodon and Snorlax. That way I can magic bounce back whatever they're trying to do, whether it be set up injury hazards or status me. Unfortunately, uh, magic bounce of course requires you to have pretty good prediction or you'll waste your turn. So uh, I will definitely want to at least keep the pressure on him within that regard because I don't think I want to bring Donphan to this matchup because number one, he has several Pokemon that are flying types or have levitate. I think he actually has four Mega Charizard, Gyarados, Skarmory, and Latias. So already four out of his 10 Pokemon aren't hit by ground type attacks. 
And then the remaining, the remaining Pokemon, only Jolteon is weak to ground type. So there's no point in bringing Donphan, unfortunately, to this battle. So I think Donphan is benched. We're going to go with Mesprit and try to figure out some spreads to see what will be the most useful. Now, the other thing that I noticed looking at his team is just that he does not have a single switch in for Tyrantrum. If you just go down the list, Latias, it doesn't want to take a hit. Starmori is too KO'd by Head Smash. Uh, Florges, sure, it can take the Dragon type hit, cannot take a Head Smash. Jolteon does not want to take Dragon type or Rock type moves. Gyarados, even with an Intimidate, does not want to take a Head Smash. Mian Shao resists it and is still too KO'd. Mega Charizard Y is obviously KO'd. Shaman does not want to take either of the stabs. Gastrodon does not want to take the Dragon type move and can't do much back. Gastrodon can use counter, of course, but that's a very niche scenario. And then Snorlax does not want to take uh, either of those moves. So I will definitely be bringing Tyrantrum to the battle. It will just require me to play pretty safely with it. Uh, Shoutouts to, of course, um, Aiden, or Aiden, I'm actually not sure how it's pronounced, but uh, he recommended that I try out a Scarf Tyrantrum set, which in practice I was actually trying out a Scarf Sinchino, just in case he brought something weird like a Dragon Dance Mega Charizard Y. I haven't decided what I want to do yet. In practice, I was never able to set up a Dragon Dance with Tyrantrum, so having the ability to just outspeed something and hit it with a head smash sounds really nice. So it really is going to depend on what I end up bringing. It's, it's going to be kind of tough. Now with all that said, I will be bringing Tyrantrum, I will be bringing Mesprit. Uh, definitely going to have Venusaur, it's going to be very bulky. Uh, going to have Togekiss, and we're going to have Weavile. With Togekiss in particular, I'm able to deal with Latias, Florges, Gyarados, Mian Shao. I can take a hit from Mega Charizard Y and paralyze it back. And if he does bring Shaman or Gastrodon, they can't do much to Togekiss. I will also be bringing a more bulky Togekiss with Nasty Plot. I will definitely be running Thunder Wave on it. If I get an opportunity to paralyze Mega Charizard Y or Mian Shao, I don't expect him to have Jolteon. So if I have that opportunity to paralyze something, I'm definitely going to take it. Slowing down his team will make things a lot easier for my Pokemon. And that was another reason I was struggling whether to run Synthesis or uh, Sleep Powder on Mega, Ven or Mega Venusaur. Just because with Sleep Powder, I just have that mischance. Plus, it really puts me at odds with trying to run Paralysis on Togekiss or Mesprit. Now, with Mesprit, I am definitely looking at a... I'm going to have Stealth Rocks on it just in case. Since he has Mega Charizard Y, it would be kind of silly to not run Stealth Rocks on something. But I would still like to try my hand at making sure I can reflect his entry hazards back at him. Now I'm going to have Stealth Rocks, Magic Bounce, and probably Thunderbolt. Because with just Psychic, I have no way to hit the Skarmori, even if I am able to reflect his hazards back at it. What I plan on doing is bringing, leading with Mesprit, because I'm expecting him to lead with either Skarmori, if he brings Jolteon, he might lead with Jolteon, or he also might lead with Mian Shao. Typically, in his uploads at least, he tended to lead with Skarmori, the battles of his that I watched, the four that I have information on. So, that's what I'm expecting him to do, is just lead Skarmori. If he decides to lead something else, I'll handle that then. If he ends up having Bounce on Gyarados, a Dragon Dance Bounce set, um, Bounce, of course, can't one-hit KO Venusaur, so I'll get to hit him with a Sludge Bomb. I'm not going to rely on statusing his Gyarados, as it is very likely that he'll have a Lumberry on Gyarados to get up either a Dragon Dance or, or a Substitute or something like that. So I will not be playing around with Gyarados, as if it sets up, it can run through my entire team. The, I do like that little bit of team struggle that he has there. If he has the Sun up, then he can't rely on Waterfalls as mandatory stab for Gyarados. So I am very much looking forward to seeing what type of Gyarados that he decides to have. So, expecting him to lead with Skarmory, have Latias, Forges, uh, Gyarados, me and Shao make a Charizard, and I am, by the battle, I will have decided if I want to run Scarf Sinchino or if I want to run Scarf or Bandit Tyrantrum. Bandit Tyrantrum is just so hard to, to argue with, but Bandit Tyrantrum in this circumstance in particular, being outsped by the likes of Latias, 
floor, or he might run speed on floor just so it could outspeed. So Latiat's floor just Gyarados, me and Shao make a Charizard Y, Shaman. All those Pokemon outspeeding it, he's going to take hits repeatedly, or I'm going to be forced to switch out a lot more. With the Scarf or running Dragon Dance, I can get to that plus one, and at the very least start to at KOing some things, force him to make some switches that he doesn't want to make. So the more that I'm talking myself through this, Scarf is sounding better on Tyrantrum. And in that situation, I will be running probably the Expert Belt on Sinchino. That will allow me to check Gyarados. If it does put up a substitute, even after an Intimidate, I will be able to break through the substitute with uh, Expert Belt and Rock, uh, Rock Blast. And since Bullet Seed won't be that useful in this battle, I'm going to switch that out to Knock Off. Uh, knock Off will allow me to get rid of some of those items. It'll give me a little bit more coverage on Latias. And if he is running a Scarf me and Shao, I can get rid of that Scarf, which will be really, really nice to do. So that's the approach we're going to take to this battle. And hopefully things go as planned. I really need to get a win here, not only to knock him off of being undefeated, but to make up for my last week loss. So shout out to everyone who's watching Evo right now. I'm kind of doing my team planning around Evo. And uh, Evo's been getting me really hyped, so I hope this battle goes well. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.